In this video, we will take a look at this concept of credit value at risk, credit FAR. This video will be helpful for candidates who are preparing for the FRM Part 2 exam. Let's begin with a very quick verbal definition of credit VAR. Think of credit VAR to be the credit risk loss over a certain time period, which in the context of VAR is also known as the horizon. And credit VAR is that threshold loss that will not be exceeded with a certain confidence level. Okay, in this definition, there are a few aspects that we need to take note of. The first aspect is that my credit VAR is essentially a loss number. Secondly, it's a loss which arises because of or stems from credit risk related events. Number three, it's a loss which is realized over a certain chosen time period, which is our horizon. And number four, it's a threshold loss number whose probability of not being exceeded is equal to our chosen level of confidence. Okay, now this verbal definition of credit VAR can be written down mathematically like this. If I were to assume that my loss is a random variable, then my credit VAR is that threshold loss number, the probability of whose not being exceeded is equal to my chosen level of confidence. Okay, now what I can do is that I can get more clarity around what credit war is by looking at this concept in a visual manner. For this purpose, I can do this that, you know, treating this guy to be a random variable, I can plot its probability distribution function. Let's say its PDF looks something like this. From this PDF of this random variable, I can very quickly then locate this high percentile loss number denoted by L star such that I leave off a right tail in this distribution whose area is equal to 1 minus my chosen level of confidence. Okay, this L star is that loss number, the probability of whose being exceeded is 1 minus our chosen level of confidence and whose probability of not being exceeded is equal to my chosen level of confidence. Okay, as per this definition of credit VAR then, my credit VAR is simply equal to this L star which I have read from this probability distribution. Okay, now typically when it comes to credit VAR, we choose our level of confidence to be 99.9% .9 and we choose our horizon to be one year. Okay, this means that L star, which is read as per this chosen level of confidence, is that loss number which will be exceeded only in one out of 1000 cases. Okay, now please note this that there is also an alternative and slightly different definition of credit VAR as well. And as per this slightly different definition of credit VAR, we define it to be equal to not just this high percentile loss number, which is L star, but rather L star minus the expected loss. Okay, coming back to this diagram which we have here, from this loss distribution, as per this definition, I have to read off not just the L star, but also the expected loss denoted by EL. As per this definition then, credit VAR is equal to the difference between, or let's say the distance between L star and EL. Okay, these are my two definitions of credit VAR that you have to keep in mind. Okay, now what is the purpose for calculating credit VAR? Well, the purpose is to estimate the capital that you will need to absorb 
or let's say act as a buffer against unforeseen credit risk losses. Okay, you can use credit var for the purpose of estimating your economic capital. You can use it for the purpose of estimating your regulatory capital. Okay, now how does credit var differ from market risk var? Okay, market risk var is a type of var which we are very familiar with. How are these two types of var different from each other? Well, note this, that when it comes to credit war, the choice of horizon is one year. For market risk war, the horizon is very short. It can be one day, it can be, let's say, 10 days. Okay, when you are working with a very long time horizon, such as one year, for the purpose of credit war estimation, well, what changes is that, number one, the drifts of all those market variables which influence the value of any given position, these drifts become rather important. Okay? Also, when you are talking about a very long horizon, such as one year, any embedded optionality in your position and how this optionality is modeled also becomes important. Okay, so the first key difference between these two types of VAR is that credit risk VAR has a longer time horizon which makes modeling of credit risk VAR more difficult. And this essentially is the second point which I have listed here. And that is when it comes to credit risk VAR or credit VAR, the approaches, the models that you have to work with, they tend to be more elaborate as compared to the approaches and models that we use for the purpose of market risk war. Now, before I stop, let me do this. Let me quickly lay down for you a few specifications which have to be kept in mind when calculating credit war, specifically when building your loss distribution. Okay? Now, we said that our loss is essentially a random variable. We define this loss to be equal to the value of, let's say, our position as of today minus the value of our position at the end of our chosen time horizon. Okay, so V naught minus V at this time capital T. Standing as of today, this guy is not known to me. It is random. And this is what makes the loss also random. Right? I can say this, that V at this time capital T is scenario dependent. It depends on the scenario that I assume will prevail at the end of my chosen horizon. Right? Now to build my loss distribution, therefore, what I need to do is to generate many, many scenarios for you know, what will happen at this time, capital T. For each of these scenarios, calculate the value of V sub capital T, feed it into this formula to calculate the loss for any given scenario, and from all these losses across many different scenarios, build my loss distribution. Okay? Then comes this question, how will you generate all these many different scenarios? One way to do this is to use Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, You can do Monte Carlo simulation of all those variables, all those risk factors which go into calculating this V sub capital T. Okay, Since we are not here focusing on market risk var, but rather credit risk var, calculation of this V sub capital T has to properly account for losses which come from default of your counterparty and to make things more accurate, not just default, but also migration of your counterparty to worse of credit ratings. Okay, downgrades of your counterparty to worse of ratings. Okay, to do this, therefore, when you do your Monte Carlo simulations, you have to simulate whether your counterparty defaults over your chosen horizon 
and also whether if not default your counterparty migrates to worse off credit ratings okay now please note this that when it comes to generating these scenarios we have to assume that we are in the real world that means in generating these scenarios when it comes to your market variables we have to use real world drifts for these market variables when it comes to probabilities of default and or migration to worse off ratings these probabilities have to be real world probabilities or probabilities which have been estimated using historical experience okay now once you are in any given scenario in order for you to calculate the value of that position in any given scenario you should be using the parameters which come from the risk neutral world okay so for end of horizon valuation purpose you need to assume that you are in the risk neutral world and not in the real world okay this distinction has to be kept in mind this video was all about understanding this concept of credit var how this number is defined how it's put to use how it differs from market risk var and a few specifics regarding how this number is calculated